Hi, welcome to this week's episode hosted by Gray and Mark Lawson, Dunn's Health and Fitness, and Mark Elm of Leeds Beckett University, where we take training theory and science onto the gym floor. everybody welcome back to episode 24 of the yorkshire fitness podcast i am not going to repeat the same today and say wow these are flying by boys aren't they this is amazing it's going really quick i'm going to say we are nearly six we kind of we've got nearly six months worth of podcast stored up haven't we yeah nearly week 24 that's pretty impressive isn't it you know like that so in a way it kind of has gone quick hasn't it six months is it? Is it? Is it? Am I right there? Is it six months? Well, fifty-two weeks in a year, Greg. Fifty-two yeah, weeks yeah. in a year, twenty-four. So yeah, on so on week twenty-six, we've been doing it six months. Yeah, we, well, we didn't miss. We didn't miss a week. So we we kind of yeah. twenty-five of. It probably is six months. So that's, yeah, that's quite impressive. I think so. We've been um, consistent, boys, haven't we? It's a yeah. habit. We've created. We have created a new <laughs> habit ourselves by doing this and making us finding time and making us do this every week. So yeah. So if you're listening, um, I hope you've caught up on all of us 24. Or if you're a new listener, go back to the beginning or dip in and out. We'll do whatever. Uh, but so today, if you've caught up on us last couple, we've had a couple of really interesting guests in, haven't we? We've had a couple of kind of elite performers in their own fields. We've had John, the bodybuilder, uh, John Eaton, and we've had Mick Hill, the runner. And so. Mick, it's quite. Int- I've been texting Mick quite a bit this week and chatting to him because it's been world champs. Have you been watching it, Elm? Yes, yeah, we've been avid watchers of the athletics. Yeah, ain't that amazing? Some of the, I mean, some of the speed. You know, when you put the speeds into perspective, that like the 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 guy who won the fifteen hundred meters. Did you watch that? Yeah, the um, Whiteman. Yeah, Whiteman. Ja- Whiteman um, yeah. Jake Whiteman is it? What? Three minutes twenty nine. Three minutes thirty for fifteen hundred meters. That's two minutes. 20 kilometer. The, the most impressive speed I've seen in the athletic championship, and this is from a completely random event, you're not going to expect this one. And, and we have a lot of these compet- competitors at Leeds Beckett. Was the men's, the first 1K of the men's race walk. Right. I think the, the, the race, the, the, t- the time for the first 1K was about 3 minutes 41, 42. And they, that's a walk. They walked one kilometer in a 340 ish pace. Faster than most people can run it. Yeah. What's the rules on the walking? Is is has one foot got to be in contact with the floor? It was, was quite interesting. Yeah, we, we were watching this because it's like, like it's one of the first events on. So none of the kind of events that you think you're going to watch are on yet. So it was just there. Uh, so we, we ended up watching it. And the, the two main rules are: you have to have one foot in contact with the ground at all times. I think it's called, they call it lifting. So if you're running, you have one foot in contact with the ground. There's a flight phase where nothing's in contact with the ground. The one foot lands, and that, that's the cycle. Yeah. In race walking, one foot must always be in contact with the ground and the lead leg must make contact with the straight knee. Right. So that's why they end up walking in a very, very unique style. to try yeah, and really, really 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 really. I was going to say is other rule that they've got to walk on the backside then because that's pretty much what they're no, doing. Purely, purely by coincidence. <laughs> right. right. But that's what... <laughs> no, you start walking the bum around, you're not right. going to be any faster. Right, okay. <laughs> But it's been good, hasn't it? It's been really good to watch. Really, yeah, it's really, great. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it just, it, it, to me, it just makes you realise how amazing the human body is with what it can do when it's trained. The, the, yeah. the events, the speed, and stuff like that. It's just, it, it's pretty immense. So yeah. Uh, so on to that. So today's episode, with us three, we are going to have a chat about probably our last three as performance guests, aren't we? So we've had three yeah. that have been really performance related, really normal people. I know we had his GP, Nicky, talking about the menopause, but we've had Mick Hill, the most recent one. We've had John Eaton, the bodybuilder, and we've had Laura, um, the hypnotherapist. So, but all kind of elite in their own field, haven't they? But they haven't, they've kind of, we were t- chatting before, weren't we? They're very normal people who've decided to change and, and do something elite and they've made themselves get there, haven't they? They haven't, they haven't just been born some freak of nature who has been a, an athlete. They've kind of, it's kind of all down to the work and the goal setting and everything they've done to achieve it. So we, we just thought it'd be a really good episode to chat I think, about. Ben. I think one of the big things at all, or uh, I think with Mick and John, the downside to other things, but how easy it was for them, even when the train, John's were a little bit different, but I think it were really relatable to normal people when they try and crash diet. We mentioned it a little bit at the time, but Mick, 
focused on running in his early 20s, but then drifted that little bit, you know, just new job, took his eye off running a little bit and how his weight crept up without even realising it. His weight just crept up and up and up and then an injury, which can happen to any of us at any one point. And if all you've ever done is run and at that age outrun his diet pretty much because he didn't have a great yeah. diet, his diet suffered, he ended up eating more. And just to go up, I mean, he went up 50% body weight, didn't he? 60% body weight in yeah. men. You know, like, it's massive in short space of time, wasn't it? But, and I think that's just, that's just how people live, don't they? You can see in people's busy lives, we've talked about it, that it's all right for us. I mean, you're, I don't know, you know, like, for your time, you struggle for time, we we work in a gym, don't we? You know, like, for us, we fit it into his day, but we're here, we don't have to make a special journey to go. It's part of our day, that's it. But for a lot of people, it's a special, it's got to be a conscious decision to either get up early, fit it in through the working day, go after work, whatever it might be. It's a conscious decision. And when you're focused on work and, you, and you're having to be driven for work to pay bills and everything else, it, um, even if you're competing at a higher level, it's easy to take an eye off ball, is what I'm saying. So you can oh, yeah. see why people suffer. I was thinking, so, I was like, driving, driving, to, I, I was driving through Leeds, um, I think it was yesterday or the other morning, and you kind of seen all the office workers go going to work, and I like going, yeah, I do have the time, I do have that kind of traditional nine to five working pattern, but I really don't. I can work flexibly, so I can get up a bit early, arrive to work a bit early, I stay a bit late, so I, I can fit training into the day as long as I plan my day around correctly. So I, I can train between nine to five if, if needed. And I was thinking, if I worked in an office and I had to start at nine and finish at five, and that's there's no kind of like going off to the to the gym because I don't have access to a gym on site. It's just so my life is quite convenient in that respect. Not quite as convenient as literally working in the on the gym floor, but it's not that hard. If I was working back in the office job, I mean, I spent that's where I met Laura working in the call center. I don't know if I'd do any training because you you'd get up, sort the kids out, get to work. Get home five o'clock, get across Leeds, rush out traffic, wherever it is, get home, sort the kids out with them to bed. I'm going, it's like half seven, eight o'clock before that's done. When, when am I am I really going to start doing yeah. exercise at eight o'clock at night, having kids getting up at five, half five in the morning? Like, absolutely not. I'm, I'm going back to sleep. You're just finding the nearest convenient food you can because you're, you're knackered and tired. So, like, my life is still quite convenient for exercise and training. But I, I, how other people have done it. I mean, I really my people who, like, like Mick, who, who was able to go and like run the distances he was running because it's a time thing as well. Like I could go to the gym and do a strength session in 30 minutes. I don't usually, but I really could if I really wanted to. But there's no shortcuts in running miles. You, you, you've got to put the miles in, haven't you, for these endurance events. Yeah, yeah. So to be able to, to fit work life in and, and still the training in is, is really quite impressive. And yeah, like, we so, see it. Go on, Max. No, I was just going to say, we see it, though, with our members, don't we? I mean, like, the ones who we PT, like, through day and a bit, but, like, people come to us classes before work, after work, you know, like, and they do it, and it becomes part of what they do, but when they're juggling it around kids and work and jobs, and and it is, it's, um, it, it's it, you've got to, like you say, you've got to admire them, haven't you, how they do it. I mean, I think I would still do, well, I did when I, when I worked. I still fit it around what I did. I used, you know, like, I used to try and plan you know, like after work, right, I've got my stuff, I'm going, you know, no matter what, but I have always like really liked it. So motivation wise, it won't, I just know it's always done me good, just my head and my body. I just don't, I can't imagine not training really, you know, like. I, I, I get yeah. that, but I mean, how many times? But, it is, but it is really hard, you know, like there's yeah. no two ways about it. It's really hard. And I think when you've got I think it just shows that, yeah, you've, it's just got to become part of what you I do. Think you've got, I think you've got to really enjoy it. You've got to find the type of exercise that you enjoy, haven't they? You know, like this, we all have said, there's something out there for everybody, yeah. whether it, like nobody hates every single type of exercise, whether it's walking, you know, like brisk walking, walking your dog, jogging, as long as you're not thinking you're going to compete or you can't even be run. There's gym sessions, there's spinning. Look at the people that come to spinning box side. There's lots of different types of activities, yeah. isn't there? More than um, ever. More than ever that you can do. And there will be something. It's just you've got to try. You've mm. got to try things, haven't you? And you've got to find that thing that is worth putting yourself out for, whether it's setting your alarm to get up on the morning before work or staying up a bit later on in the evening when you get in from work and you've got kids to bed. I don't know, but there's something. You've got to find something to try and help you um, mm. motivate yourself to do it, haven't you? 
and, and the other thing as well, I mean, it, 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 about your, your environment. So, like, I, during lockdown, this is where I, I, I struggled. So I had to go and run because I didn't have anything else. If I'd have had some weights in the garage, I probably would never have gone out for a run. I, would, I was never going to run a sub 25k, 5k, or sub 55 minute 10k if I had weights in the garage. That, that was never going to happen. I might have gotten a bit stronger. But that, that was it. So if you do have that access, like I know an exercise bike that's kind of cluttered up in the corner, you don't mind putting telly on. You, you probably get away with that eight o'clock at night, but like going out to the gym to say to do something you don't really want to do because you should do it. Yeah. You might do it once, twice, and then eventually those gremlins in the back of the head will, will pop back up and go, no, I'm not bothered. I, just, I was going to say then as well, Matt, like you can do it a couple of times, but then if you, especially if you've got young kids who've got an early bedtime, you're thinking, how selfish is it of me to, to not go home and not like... Oh, no, no. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, but we, we did it, didn't we? We used to train after we put... When Alf and Tom put bit there's only four week in them, in them two, and we we were going out. We used to go, like, down, we used to go down, down to bike half eight at night, didn't we? Yeah. Get, them to, get, yeah. get them to bed, bath them, get them to bed, and then go out and train and come home at half that. But like I said, we probably, because of just... Not that we're out special, obviously, but we, if you like it and you and you want to fit tight, you'll find time for it. But for people who it's not that way, which are in for everybody, that's when it's tough, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, but you, you also said your environment, and that goes to Mick again a little bit when he were working with blokes, who, and it was bacon sandies on a morning, fish and chips, McDonald's, he says at dinner time, takeaways again on a night. You know, like he says, and without realising it, you just so again that's down to his yeah, environment and his work and the people you're around with at you, you know, like if Mick could have worked in a gym and not yeah. done a job in his life, if he'd have worked in a gym and been an elite runner like he was, he'd have never have put that weight on, would he? No. But it just what it's funny we, t- we mentioned about this because we, we we had this conversation about a rugby league player who, who's carried on doing exercise, but there's an assumption that in, in the pro world, the elite sports world, everybody loves training and, and lo- like loves being the best and I'd Say, say to me all the time, but that really isn't the case. There's like the, no. amount, the number of people that I have coached over my years who, if they didn't have to come to the gym because that was what they contractually obliged to do, they would never have gone near it in, in, in a million years. Some might do, and it would do bench and curls, and that would be it. But there's a good percentage of, of players in rugby league, and I, I won't be the only sport. There'll be lots of others as well going, I'm not doing that. I have to because I'm earning a bit of cash from, from playing sport and that's what means I can go on holiday a year or buy this or buy that. But if, if they said you don't have to come to the gym to play and, and to, to get your contract, they wouldn't do. No, definitely not. I think that's a majority. Definitely. When we have our reunions, when, we're, when we get together, we, there's definitely more lads that do not carry, continue exercise after when they've retired than that do carry on exercise after they've retired. True. So anyway, going back to Mick, let's talk about Mick. So the, the thing that I thought were really good, the point they were putting across, really relatable to probably most people was, yeah, when he put his weight like the the weight gain phases, and he was talking about not being the the, the out the trying to outrun his bad diet. I mean, he was running some like hundred mile a week. Yeah, he was burning some serious calories off from running, wasn't he? Yeah, it, absolutely crazy amount. I mean, just the amount of time you were spending running, even you think, well, that's time that you couldn't spend eating. But if at the same time he's working in it and if he's driving and picking up snacks and grabbing food and fast fast foods, takeaways, you still cannot lose weight. So it's like no matter how many times we talk, I know we've talked about it in our little nutrition podcast, but no matter how many times you say it, if you don't sort your diet out, you're not going to get to where if, if, you, if your goal is to lose weight or be the right type of body composition to suit your frame, you're not going to get there unless you sort your diet out. No, I mean, especially Nicky, because he's, he's not a, like a, a tall, like big muscular bloke. The amount of calories he would have expended running is not that much. No. In, in, a, in a Mars bar, he's probably had at least 10K. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean I, I'll burn a lot. Is that fast? <laughs> and he's obviously very efficient when he's running. Yeah, yeah. I'd, like, yeah. I'd like to know actually, because I know he, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him how many calories he does burn on a 10k. I mean, it takes I about did, like I did, 5,000 calories, the amount of hours it takes. I did a 10k, 10K these days. I did a 10k last night with my rucksack. It took me an hour with my weighted rucksack, and I burnt, I think it was not, I had my heart rate on it, and I had my chest strap on, so I knew it were accurate. And it was, I will tell you.
We haven't yeah, done away in the red. Eight or nine hundred calories. It were a lot. Eight hundred and seven. <laughs> eight hundred and seventeen calories. Yeah. That's for a weighted ten k. That's a weighted ten k. Seventeen kilograms in the bag. A run at a ten k run. Took me an hour and two minutes. That's eight hundred and seventeen calories. What's that? It's not even fish and chips, is it? No. It's not. It's not a takeaway meal. It's nothing. So even that. That were an hour of hard work. A lot of sweat. Nearly some tears when my flexors started tightening up and my Achilles tendon were out. But it's a lot. It's, so it's just the same old thing. I could have got back from that run and thought, you know what? I deserve a couple of beers here and I'm going to get a Chinese takeaway. And that is it. They are, they're, all them call it calories are gone. I'm mm. back into a surplus. Aren't I? So what you're saying is you didn't outrun it, did you? I didn't outrun no. it. Man. Well, I did because I got home and had a yeah, stir yeah. fry. Right, all right. So... No, so yeah, so but I really, just thought it was really good to hear from a runner as well. You know, like it's not just us. It's not just yeah. us telling people, look, it's no good coming to the gym and exercising if you're going home and you haven't got that. If you haven't got that side of your life sorted and you're in control of your calories, let's say, um, you're not going to do it. It, it was actually coming from an athlete as well, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? And like you say, it put six stone on, didn't it? It went from 10 stone to 16. Which is absolutely nuts, and he did it twice, and he went through that journey twice. We definitely, we've definitely got to get him back on because there are lots more we can go into detail. The other, I was going to say like five lessons down. We never heard any of his lessons, did we? No, yeah, no, we know. didn't. No. The other thing then, though, when we go back to John, I thought the other one of the big things with John was, which was relatable to the crash dieting stuff that people do when they like. So for him getting ready for competition, I thought that what. You know, but we've always talked, well, we've talked about it on here, haven't we? Again, you know, like making smaller changes and making more uh, behaviour change, haven't we? Rather than going on diets and crash diets and, you know, not mention, we won't mention no, uh, no other things, but where they go on and they're just eating nothing for six, eight weeks to lose all this weight and they tell you, but, but it works, Martin, oh, great, but it works. You know, like, and, and we're going, yeah, but what did you do when you finished? Well, I put it back. Again, I just like, it does work when you're doing it, but that job on it when he was saying, like, obviously, when you get ready for competition, it works. His body fat strip, it lowers his body fat, it looks well, it looks better for competition, what it needs to be. But you're giving up so much in that time that when it finishes, all you want to do is eat anything and everything, yeah. And you put the well, weight, you were talking about having Harry for breakfast, and that's what I mean. It, it mentioned having Harry because you're just craving everything, and oh. I just thought that. That's just like the same thing when we always say, don't give up too much, too quick. And I thought that's, again, I thought that, like I said, in extreme cases, they're, they're very relatable to what people, just yeah. their average exercise. Because we've always said, haven't we, most people who exercise want to improve the body composition. However they want to look at it, however they word it, it was weight, it was inches, do whatever, they want to improve the body composition, they want to look better don't they they want to you know they want to lose some body fat and they want to look more toned whatever that whatever the term you want to use but i think just by but by doing it in one of these things that are not sustainable which we always say if you can't sustain it it's no good is it you you want to live and your body wants to stay like that does it for your health as well it's not good having these ups and downs and and being all over your body wants to be quite still so the small changes all the time in the other way that we've always yeah. pushed it and the way we'll carry on pushing it and, and try and, I suppose, try and educate people and get them to see it. And, and I think target, I mean, I suppose this is going a bit off, isn't it? We're, you know, like making people focus on maybe getting stronger, maybe doing these other things and hopefully the other bits fall into place, you know, changing the way they eat a little bit, the way they think about the food um, is more important than instant weight loss. I think that that's a bit like the John the John Eaton story, isn't it? When he was when he was competing, he was living that side. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he, he was keeping himself lean, but he was, when he talked about having fish and chips, and he dared touch the fish and chip paper yeah. because even though he knew we were quite well educated, he knew that there was no way on this earth that that fat was going to seep through his skin of his hands and affect his body fat. But he dared touch it; he would not touch that. And you think that's not a great life, is it? You know, like if that is, I know. It, some people if you get too obsessed skinny or having that six pack it's going to take over your life and life's too short for that shit you've got to enjoy yourself as well aren't you it's finding that balance we always talk about it don't we getting the balance right not being too obsessed everything in moderation and enjoying yourself but 
in but that helped. Yeah. Has it frozen, Elmer? Have you frozen, Elmer? Just thinking. No, your your signal from mine is, isn't great, so I'm just kind of every now and again you kind of pause on me. So. Um, All right. Uh, yeah. So, um, so we've spoke about John a, a bit there. Like, the, have you got any more bits that you want to talk about them? I just thought we could, like that leads me, I think, into the Laura side of things. Yeah. Well, I was actually going to say I think there's, there's a bit of a link between the two. So. Yeah. What, logical. Yeah. So we're having a bit of interference again there, I think. Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, you still, ah, you're back there, guys. I think, yeah, yeah. I think what Laura mentioned, I think both guys would, would, would talk about as well, but maybe not necessarily have dealt with through the hypnotherapy space, was that, that kind of background noise in your brain, that when you're tired and when you're stressed and when you're lacking sleep, that noise comes right to the front and it's all thing you can think about. I mean, I've had at the minute kind of you, you, you got the the newborn, you're not sleeping very well, you're trying to manage your workload, you want to go to the gym, you want to eat healthily, but eventually nothing, you can't, you haven't got enough energy left to be disciplined. You haven't got enough energy left to kind of like like train hard and stuff like that. So all those gremlins that you've built up over the years about, oh, just have that convenience food because she's going to make you feel better. It's just there. You, you want the carbs, you want the crap because you get that... You, you, you build those kind of, uh, we read uh, Chip Paradox, he talks about gremlins, these kind of automated responses in your brain. All right, last time you were stressed, what did you do? Oh, you went and got some crap food. Oh, that, oh, that, that's how we deal with that now. So that's that program put back into your brain. I think what Laura's in therapy was speaking about is how to break some of those gremlins down. I think what, what John mentioned there was actually, there was probably some, some kind of deep rooted gremlins that he built up over a period of time through that dieting process that when he got to that extreme, it fucking went crazy. Um, that, that kind of inner chimp kind of moment where they had a completely emotional response to having chip fat grease on a piece of paper. And it yeah. was like that emotional thing, oh, I can't have that now. But the human brain would never have had that kind of response. It's that, just that kind of emotional gremlin that took over. So I think, I think what Laura said there was, was really quite, um, in, insightful in the fact that we've got this kind of noise all of the time and then when you when you rest and you like you do, say you've just been holiday you've had a really nice relaxing holiday you come back and you're like, okay great I've unwound all the crap from life has just washed away and you, you can be really kind of productive and then eventually all that crap builds back up again yeah and you're back in the daily grind and four weeks later you're on Chippy teas every Friday night. You've got four cans in front of you. You sit around the city watching. Why the fuck am I doing this? It's because you don't have any kind of brain space left to choose to eat or cook something healthy. Choose to go and do a bit of foam rolling or stretching instead of sitting on this. I thought that was quite helpful about just kind of dumping all the crap that's getting in your way of being productive and being successful. I think I think yeah. what happened when when you see the other guys there. I think that's what Mick was saying, wasn't it as well? When he got stressed work stress was coming up, time was limited, he was in the car a lot. He just defaulted back to those behaviours, those gremlins that he'd built up over time because I can eat what I want because he was probably very lean and run a lot and he never never understood or never had to deal with the consequence of eating crap because his running volume was always high. He probably had quite high metabolism when he was in his early 20s. Right? He didn't see, it would have been internal, the consequences, but not kind of to the naked eye looking outside going, oh, he's still lean because he's running all these miles. He probably could have run faster or run further, but it, 21 years old is an amazing thing. You're going to kind of recovering from crap, aren't they? So all those kind of, that kind of response was stress, eat crap, that's fine because you'll deal with that from running. Eventually, that didn't work anymore. So I, I thought there was, there was a lot to take, for, and I thought all three yeah, in different ways showed us that. Yeah, they do. John, it's, I spoke to John after uh, I saw him walking dog, uh, but he were on about. But we're just on about, and it was that same thing. But the, everything that we talk about, like, so from Mick's point of view, but from John's point of view, Laura, it's all it's all psychological, isn't it? All the decisions we make, it's all it's all it's it's that it's that process in your head. That, you know, like and how you deal with things that cause the problems, don't they? Yeah. You know, it's it's changing, it's changing. Bit, you know, like it is massive now for things, but it is changing people's behaviours for whether it's food, exercise, or whatever. That's what people, you know, like focusing on weight loss or whatever. It's focusing on behaviour, isn't it? 
it's and you know like what goes on upstairs. So yeah, I think they. Are, I thought they were all really good. I've, I they've been good to talk to. I think you can take a lot away from it. I think people should be able to take a lot away from it because it's relatable. Just everyday things, like you said before, the normal people, normal jobs, but ended up competing at really high levels in their own uh, in their own sport or field, whatever you want to yeah. call it, bodybuilding. Is it a sport? Nah, Let's not have that debate. <laughs> not really, but yeah, listen, it's a discipline, that's for sure. You know, like I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, they achieve physical excellence, and and, and yeah, that's what they, they went out to do. Uh, yeah. A couple, of, yeah. So I mean, I'd also say like success starts in the kitchen, not in the takeaway shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that that's definitely something that I think most people can learn from. Like, you cut out the takeaways and start cooking. You you won't you won't do you won't go far wrong. And they all started off in a very 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 ordinary life. They're all full time working people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not sure about Mick, but I know John and, and Laura both have got kids. Um, so like th- these are all like. Lots of people will put excuses in front of themselves saying, well, it's not, I can't do it because I'm, I'm not that talented or I've not that upbringing or that opportunity or I've got work, or I've got kids. And I've, I've, I've definitely used those excuses over the last couple of years, definitely. And, and it's, 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 a, it's a cheap cop-out. you just got to be realistic about what you can do. You just can't do what a 21-year-old version of yourself could do. But there's no, there's no reason why somebody can't set a goal and go and achieve it. You just have to be kind of realistic about the time it takes and the effort you can commit to doing that, but it doesn't mean to say you don't do it. Yeah, you, you just got to kind of be more realistic about when, where, and how much you can do, but still commit to those things. Yeah, yeah, that is bang on. Yeah, you're spot on there. That is that is hundred percent true. Like you said, though, that goes back to kind of where we started, isn't it? But there's there's something there for everybody in there. Like you said, to say I I have got no time, I cannot exercise, is a cop out because if you want to exercise you can fit something that we're not saying you, you've got to do 10 hours a week or run 100 mile like that but you can do some form of exercise can't you, at some point through the week even if it is one session a week one session a week is better than nothing you can go for one jog you can go for one bike ride you could get to the gym you could do something once a week you could go play badminton you could so there's all there's always something um and it's, it's getting started a lot of time for people it is that it's getting started in it then you go back to habits. Done, and then it's, it's the habit. <laughs> I think it was James Clear that wrote this, the Atomic Habits guy. And I, I think it was him. I remember it's the inertia of life. So like inertia is the resistance to, for an object to change. So like you, you're pushing a car. Once you've got the car, like to get the car moving from the first push, is hard. once it's moving, it's easy, isn't it? And it's like, like yeah. even nothing. It's like getting the car moving and trying to push it. It's going to take a lot of effort. But once the effort yeah. you've got, the momentum of the car carries on going, it gets easier. Um, and that's as long as you don't let it stop. I'll put handbrake on. <laughs> just don't let it stop, would you? Yeah. But it's true, isn't it? You can continue. It's got to be something that you can stick to, be yeah. consistent with. We talk about that all the time. Is it... Um, can you make can you carry on with it? What's the word for it? I used it earlier. Sustainable. Is it sustainable? That's it. Is what and, you're taking on sustainable? And a nice segue to what Graham mentioned at the beginning, back to right back to episode number one. How do you train with limited time? Exactly. Listen to it. How you can. What was yeah. that? That yeah. one got that. Not that bad. one nearly six months ago. Yeah. Nearly. Twenty four weeks ago. <laughs> can you believe it <laughs> on, on that note we need to be wrapping up yeah, yeah. on that yeah cool uh, right so that uh, it were really good wasn't it the guests we, we, we do chat about them quite a bit though we really enjoyed having them in and we think that they are they've all been really relevant in their own unique way but to everybody um, you don't have to be a bodybuilder or a professional runner to listen to the, them guys and get some no, out of what they, the story that they've told no, and on, on that note, what I think it'd be nice to say is like if you are listening to this and you think you've got a story to tell, again, it's not about the elite professionals or about kind of normal people going out and doing the normal things and, and I think other people can relate to it and draw inspiration from that. So if you're listening to this thinking, I've got a bit of a story to tell, I wouldn't mind coming on, or you know of somebody that would be really good for us, please let us know. Uh, we're open to speak to yeah. people. We've learned from this. I know we speak, we speak to all of our guests, we've, we've picked up something from. Um, and that's it, it helps us as well because like, we get to speak to more interesting people. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. good, yeah. good, Carl. 
Like instead, instead of us three, boring gets. <laughs> just, I want to. I, I don't just know who's the third person. I just, <laughs> um, <laughs> I just meant him, really. <laughs> All right. Nice one. Thanks right. for listening. If you are listening, thank you. Well done. Cheers. See you later. Cheers. See you. Hello. Hello. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you like the episode, we'd like you to share with us that on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. You can listen again on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Please leave us a rating and a review and any comments would be more than appreciated. And hopefully you'll tune back next time for our next episode. The Yorkshire Fitness Podcast.